Hello my learning buddies, welcome to Learn Forward, your own learning platform and we are here together to learn something about English grammar. What do you know about English grammar? You have been learning so many topics, isn't it? So we are here together with your English grammar book, The Grammar Hub for Grade 8 by Feather Cap and we will be starting with chapter 1. What's that? will be learning about nouns. You have already learnt a lot up to grade 7 in nouns, isn't it? So let's recall and see if there is something new to learn. Let's get started. Masculine stands for M for masculine, M for male. The next one is feminine. Good. So this is F for feminine, F for female. Right. And the next one is perfect common gender that we can use for both and there are a few professions in which though we have the different forms for masculine feminine children but still we follow it's a trend now to follow the same word as for masculine as well as for feminine then next comes the neuter gender yes which is used for n for neuter and is for non-living so isn't it easy Masculine M, male M, feminine and female F, neuter and non-living N. It's that simple, right? So we have an exercise here. Change the colored nouns from feminine to masculine. And we have learned so many masculine, feminine gender. They, sometimes they can be formed also from one gender to the other. Sometimes it's a totally new word that you have learned so many in your previous grades. So can I expect good answers from you? Okay, come on quickly, give the air. Yes, their king is a widower. So you just add er here. This becomes king. It's so easy. The daughter becomes a son, is more talkative than her mother. So mother becomes father. Is that all you have to do, children, here? No. There are some necessary changes you have to make. Because see, when we are talking about daughter, we are saying her mother. But now by changing the gender when we are talking about son, her will change to his. Yes, very good. This is what you have to remember. Some necessary changes are not highlighted. You have to do justice with such words yourself. Okay, so be perfect and just recall everything when you are putting up the answers. Now, I hope you can do these sentences yourself. Let's look at the sixth sentence. I just told you when telling about the different kinds of gender that there are a few words in which we have the masculine and feminine gender. But now it's just common to use the same word for male as well as female. Here's an example. See, the manageress is still a spinster. So, manageress, what is the masculine gender for manageress? Manager. And you see, there are many women who are working and they are leading, they are at the, the post of a manager, but you would have hardly heard this word. Whether a male or a female, we just call everyone the manager. So, we can use the same word also for both. And here, by making the changes, we get the manager is still a spinster is an unmarried woman. And the male form of this is, I could hear only a few of you giving the answer and it is correct. It is bachelor. So the manager is still a bachelor. That means an unmarried man. Right? So the rest three I leave to you to do it yourself. Moving to the next, we have compound nouns. We have studied about them also. Compound nouns are when we just combine the words and we form a new word. So, we have the examples like it can be with noun and noun like railway and station. Both are nouns. We get railway station. Ice is also a noun. Cream is also a noun. It becomes ice cream. Beauty again, parlor, they become join and it becomes a beauty parlor, a different name, a different word. Now from noun and verbs also we can have the compound nouns like hand is a part of body, shake is an action so it becomes handshake, hair and then cut it is another new word, car, wash it is again another compound word. Coming to next we have the verb plus noun, 
cook. So here we are putting the verb first. In this category, the noun is first, then comes the verb. In the third category, we have the verb first, then the noun, like cook, book. So cook is verb and book is a noun. It becomes a cookbook, washing machine. Then you have jump rope. So verb followed by a noun is another form of compound nouns. Then we have adjective followed by a noun also, black eye blue jeans hot dog so these are the compound nouns we are getting then adverb followed by a noun for example on looker so this is on is an adverb looker is a noun down is again an adverb and time is a noun so we have the down time and then over time you would have had uh, uh, Many a times come across this word, he is doing overtime, she is doing overtime, we are doing overtime. So this is another compound noun. Now adverbs can be followed by verbs also like in and then put becomes input, output becomes output. Then you have up swing, it becomes up swing. So compound nouns, it can take three forms. It can be hyphenated when between the two words you use a small dash that is called a hyphen. The other can be solid compounds. The next one can be open compounds. What the difference? In hyphenated compound nouns, we use a hyphen between the two words. In solid compounds, we put the two words together. That becomes a solid form. That's a closed form. So the two words are put together and we get a new word like here you see handshake, haircut, car wash. We are just putting both the words together to get a compound word. These such words are called the solid compounds. Then in open compounds the two words are written apart. Although they are together but still they are apart. There is a space between them like we see here black eye, blue jeans. Jump rope, beauty parlor, ice cream, railway station. Here we are neither using a hyphen between them nor we are putting them together without a space. So such compounds are called open compounds. I have already told you the examples also. More examples here are for hyphenated compounds we have sister-in-law, shout out, jack in the box, mindset, state of the art, five year old. So these are compound nouns with hyphens between them. Solid compounds are written together without space. So roll back, break fast, restroom, needle point, whatever, slingshot. So these are all the solid compounds. Then for open compounds already there are examples I have given. More examples are wet nurse, sleeping bag, roller coaster, first aid, mug shot, metal detector and many more. Right? So as an exercise, add words to the following to make compound nouns. We have so many words like lamp, finger, marketing, switch, mouth, glass, news table and we have learned so many ways of doing this. You can add, if it's a noun, you can add another noun, a verb to it or before that also you can add a verb as an adjective, another adverb before the nouns if you find here. And with these different combinations, you can make many words. Like for lamp, I can say lampshade. You might be having different words to do. If I talk about finger, I can see my fingertip. So that is another compound word. So it's a fingertip. It's on my fingertips. Don't we say? If we are talking, we are learning something, you say, oh, tables, they are at my fingertips. So that is fingertip. Now marketing, marketing can be, there are so many words you can follow with marketing. You can say marketing manager. And these are just the examples children. You can follow any of these Think of a new word that you would have come across or you can make on your own that should be meaningful and you will get a compound noun here. Switch. Switch can be switch off, switch on. So I put a dash here, hyphen here. Mouth. What's mouth? Mouth watering recipes. So it's mouth is a noun. Watering is? 
a verb. So we have one form from there, noun plus verb, glass. We say glassware, that means the things made of glass, they, that this is a solid compound. Then news, we have a newsletter. Do you get newsletter, monthly newsletter or quarterly newsletter in your school? So that's a newsletter. You have newspaper also, news reader also, so many words. Then table. Yes, tablecloth is a good example from your side. Tablecloth, table cover and you can just think of many new words. So these are just instances children. Don't just copy them. Just be thoughtful, think, explore and try to make new words from them. Okay. So is that interesting to learn about compound nouns? Can we move ahead now? Okay, coming next is the noun cases. What do you mean by noun cases? Few must be knowing. You have learned in previous grade. Let's quickly recall noun cases means in what capacity the noun is used as a sentence. Means whether it is used as a subject, is it used as the object or it is showing some position. So based on that, we have the noun cases. It's the, when it is used as a subject, it is called the subjective or nominative case. Like, Vaseem bought ice cream for Nimi. Now here when we talk about Vaseem, he is doing the action of buying. That means it is subject. So it is the subjective case. What did he bring? He bought, what did he buy? He bought an ice cream. So this is the object. But if I ask you for whom did he buy ice cream? For Nimi. Oh, that is also an object. That means Vaseem is the noun in subjective or nominative case. These two are the objects. Based on whether it is a direct object or an indirect object, we have two cases. One is the accusative or the objective case. Here it is as a direct object. The noun is used as a direct object and it gives an answer to what or whom. If you get an answer to what, what did he buy? He bought an ice cream. So this is a direct object. This is the objective or accusative case. But if I ask you for whom did he buy an ice cream? You are getting an answer to it from the word Nimi. This is an indirect object. So to whom for whom if you get an answer to this they are indirect objects and they are called dative cases. What are they called? Dative cases. So the first one is nominative or subjective case comes from subject. Accusative or objective case comes from object if it is direct, right? If there are two objects, one can be direct, the other will be indirect. And that indirect object is said to be in the dative case, right? And the last but not the least is the genitive or the possessive case. Possessive cases when we talk about possession of something with the noun. Like Mohan's book is with me. Whose book? So you get to know whose possession is there. It is whose book belongingness is there. So this Mohan's when we use apostrophe, apostrophe s, that shows the possession with nouns. So this is the possessive or the genitive case. So these were the four cases. Now what you have to remember about the formation of possessive cases, we have already learnt about the use of apostrophe. The simplest thing to remember is when the noun is singular, it can be, it can be singular or plural. Now with both, if your noun is S ending, that means at the end you have S. So, whether it is singular or plural, if it is S ending, you will simply put an apostrophe. That's it. But if it is not S ending, may it be singular or plural, if it does not have S at the end, you will use apostrophe S to show the position. This is the simple. What next? Let's read more about it. When a noun is singular, the possessive like boys, books. So it is talking about singular. And when it is plural and it ends in S, I have already told you, we just add apostrophe in that case. When noun is in plural form but does not end in S, then also you have to put apostrophe S like children's books. So children's day. Children is already plural but it does not have S at the end. That is why we are putting apostrophe S. 
women is another plural without s at the end so we use apostrophe s women's bags right now when a noun comprises more than one word for example the commander in chief so here we have the word commander also chief also but we are going to put apostrophe with the last word that is chief so it will be commander in chief's uniform apostrophe s will be added here right the next rule says when two nouns are closely connected for example if we talk about the siblings they have the same parents so if i am saying asim and asma's mother that means i am talking about both and i will be putting apostrophe s to show position only with the last word here that means with asma if i write asma and asim then i'll say asma and asim's mother which shows that i am talking about a woman who is the mother of both right so whenever we are using the closely connected nouns together using and this will come only with the last word fine is that clear okay next move to the next rule when we want to talk or write about the separate positions of two nouns for example see here i was talking about the same noun position but here i am talking about sap them separately like mrs lal's and mr abdul's children so i am not talking about the closely connected one as i was talking in this part here we are talking about the children of these two persons individually so i'll be using apostrophe s with each one of them mr lal's and mr abdul's children is that clear good next if there's a double possessive case for example if i say uh, i am talking about the wife of mohan's brother so i am using double possession it is wrong the mohan's brother's wife has knitted a sweater it is not correct to use double apostrophe so how will i say i'll say the wife of mohan's brother i'll show apostrophe only with one case and the next i will be using as a phrase of so i'll show belongingness to the later part using of how will you say the wife of mohan's brother and see you will not say the uh, um, you cannot say it other way round brother's wife of mohan no right so what you have to remember is how you are putting it in the correct sequence so the wife of mohan's brother has knitted a sweater is the correct way of saying such sentences when two nouns are used in apposition that means they are just describing for example it is my friend's mohan's pen no i mean to say here that this pen belongs to my friend whose name is mohan so i will not use apostrophe with both of them no i'll just use the apposition here it is my friend mohan's pen so only here i will be using apostrophe not here fine these are called the nouns used in apposition that means they are used for one and the same noun got it so these are the different rules that you have to remember and uh, just note what i am saying you have to remember you don't have to learn and what's the way to remember the rules i have just told you you have to reason out why are you doing a particular why are you taking a particular decision why are you using something in particular so when you just try to recall rules that way you remember them you don't have to cram them you don't have to mug them up right so let's see how you have to do ravi shankar identify and write the case of nouns in the following sentences ravi shankar played the sitar so we have ravi shankar here we have sitar here what are these cases can you tell ravi shankar is used as subject so this is the subjective or you can also say it is the nominative case when you come to sitar this is the object so is it the direct object or indirect object you will check out that also because direct object is accusative or objective case but what is the word i told you for the indirect object that is the dative case children so 
with object form you have to make sure whether it is direct or indirect right so here what is it it is the objective or the accusative case fine let's move to the next pawan bought you this cassette okay now here we have pawan and they are talking only about the noun so we'll not focus on you here and then we are talking about this cassette again this is the which case is it yes subjective case it's easy for you to, uh, to, for you to remember because subject gives you subjective and remember the other word also that is nominative what you this cassette so that is a direct object that means the objective case or the accusative case both are correct you can use any nomination here any word here okay we spoke for arts together we don't have any noun here so we spoke for arts together nothing has to be done let's leave this man proposes god disposes so what are the nouns you find here man and god yes what are they used as man is subjective nominative case very good because he is proposing what about god is that object is god the receiver of something then how can it be sub uh, nominative uh, sorry uh, accusative case objective case be thoughtful the sentence has two parts two different verbs and two different subjects so here god is also doing the action of disposing that means god is also the subject here this again is subjective and nominative you have to be that careful okay just don't go with the way we have been going no you have to think at each point so rest to i think you can do yourself make sure that you have to do about nouns only so please don't get focused on the pronoun right coming to next write the possessive form of the following okay that means you have to use apostrophe s garments of the women now reason out your action your answer at each step women is plural but no s at the end so how will you write children you will say women apostrophe s women's garments right now the next is the books for the chil for children again it's a plural without s ending so the second one will be very good that is children apostrophe s yes. children's books good next the office of the principal yes that is singular but still there is no s at the end so it will be the principal's office next the children's clothes is it right children is already plural so where will you put apostrophe you will make the correction only here the children's clothes right next the list of the voters and the dog belonging to the lady okay list of the voters i am sure you can do now what is the answer yes that is perfect this will be the voters where will you put the apostrophe tell me after s very good because this is already plural the voters list the list of voters they are already plural now the dog belonging to the lady you what you have to ask whose dog lady's dog and you get the answer there so whenever you get stuck somewhere just put a question whose and what thing we are talking about you get the answer in apostrophe form uh, i said whose dog so you got the answer the lady's dog and you will not skip any of the words from your side or add them so it is the lady's dog you don't say the lady's the dog no so it's just the lady's dog isn't that easy just by putting the question whose you get an answer in this possessive form right so can we move ahead the smile show you are excited and you are learning are you finding this interesting 
Okay, it's time to recall what we have learned in nouns in this session. So what is noun? Yes, perfect. It's a naming word. And then we have revised the five kinds of nouns, common, proper, material, collective and abstract nouns. Then we also learnt about countable and uncountable nouns. Okay, so now you will never say stars are uncountable. They are countable, yes. Singular and plural we already know. Singular stands for one and plural stands for many. Then we, already, we uh, also know how to change from singular to plural. Now there are many nouns which have the same singular and plural form. Similarly, there are nouns which have, which are always used either in singular form or just in plural form. We have done the list. So we'll just recall them. Then there are four kinds of genders. We know masculine, feminine, common uh, and neuter, nothing new. Then we learnt about compound nouns. The, there are different types of compound nouns. The one is Hyphenated in which we use a small dash that is called the hyphen. Then we also talked about the solid compounds which are put together, closed together and then there were op open compounds in which we write the two words apart with a space in between them. And we have done so many uh, examples of these. So at the last we also learnt about the noun cases that is subjective objective then the dative case where the object is in indirect form and then we also learnt about possessives using the apostrophe and then followed by few rules that you will be learning you will be remembering not learning by practice so i hope you have understood all these points so can we go ahead with an exercise okay let's see what you have grabbed what which of the following is a collective noun yes Clock, of course, which of the following nouns is always used in singular number? So, for that, we do not have the plural. What is it? Furniture. Good. So, can you tell me what's the plural of child? Children. Good. Ox is oxen and foot is feet. That's brilliant. To which gender does the word teacher belong? Do you use it only for the males, only for the females? No, that is a common gender. A non-living thing is said to be of which gender? Yes, N is for non-living, N is for neuter. Good way to remember. Which sign is used to show a possessive noun? Yes, apostrophe. Is it clear? Oh, yes. Which preposition is used in case of non-living things or indicate possession ownership? So, when we, we just put a question, whose, you get the uh, possessive form the apostrophe form otherwise what is the preposition which is used we said the purse belonging to the ladies so it is the purse of the ladies okay so this was all about uh, your uh, different uh, learnings on nouns we have another exercise here put the following nouns in appropriate boxes you have common nouns, proper nouns, collective nouns and abstract nouns. I hope you'll be able to do this. It's very easy. You have been learning since you were in grade 2. So I leave this exercise for you to do it yourself. So was that real fun learning about nouns and you got to learn in, uh, new things here? Are you sure? So will you be excited to go ahead and look forward for another sessions on other topics in grammar? We'll be coming up with more interesting topics for you in grammar. Till then, happy learning children.